Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium. Uh, today we're going to talk about acronyms. Yay, acronyms. Everyone loves acronyms, right? So we're going to kind of break them down into subjects or categories. And this is useful, I promise, for people who've been in the hobby a really long time and maybe they're coming back like I did that where I just wasn't engaged with the internet or texting, the the lingo, the the what's colloquially, 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 boy, that's a hard word to say, uh, popular terms uh, in the hobby now. So once you're in fresh water, there's one set of terms. And so when you're trying to look up these terms, if you don't know what they are, if you see someone on a forum or on Facebook and they say, hey, uh, I just used my API test kit to find out the uh, KH and GH for my BB or RCS shrimp, and it turns out that my TDS is too high, you might know what's going on. Once you know that we're talking about shrimp and water and um, some sort of brand or something, that will give you a clue as what to put in the Google heading if you're searching or you know in your search engine, uh, if you're trying to figure out one of these acronyms that I don't cover. So I wanna just breeze through real quick. Uh, there's all the acronyms of these uh, new brands that come out, so one that's very very ingrained into the hobby currently is ADA which is Aqua Design Amano. Uh, Takashi Amano was a visionary Japanese uh, designer, artist, uh, naturalist, biology lover, and nature lover and he started that company which uh, now has lines of what we call uh, nature style aquariums or aquascaping and there's been a lot of other acronyms to pop up like AFA, um, UFA, UNS, Ultim Nature Systems. I'm not going to go through and name all of them. You know, there's ACA. Uh, and then when we're talking about planting those tanks, there's TC, which is tissue cultured plants versus potted plants, um, which could be PP. Um, and depending on the group you're in, you may say, I've never heard of that acronym, but some specialized niches within the hobby have very specific acronyms and when you get into that subgroup you'll start seeing these and being like whoa so let's cover like some of the really common ones that you may run into anywhere someone talking or posting a lot of times when someone experience gives you a response uh they're trying to be brief because they've said the same thing so many times and so that's when you see things like BBA, which is black beard algae. Um, that's one that I see a lot. Um, BB also can stand for big box store or um, box, um, you know, uh, box store. Um, that that one uh, can also stand for baby brine shrimp. It can stand for uh, beneficial bacteria. So when you're cycling your tank, there is the the good bacteria the nitrifying bacteria and so a lot of people use that for beneficial bacteria uh, along with that in the shrimp world blue bolt shrimp which are a type of uh thai shrimp uh or not thai taiwanese sorry uh and then bb also in filter media can mean bio balls so uh yeah i know that's confusing guys sorry uh, let's go through really quickly the shrimp world because a lot of you might be here due to that and the shrimp Okay, there's a lot of acronyms in the shrimp world. I'm not going through all of them, but I'll touch on some so Neo NEO which is just for Neo Caridina and then there's Caridina. Those are two big distinctions Caridina tend to be a little more difficult next level to take care of usually uh, not always but uh, the Neo Caridina are tend to be the the yellow the red, the blue, the green, the bright colored shrimp that are easier to take care of that all are Neocaridina palmata, Davidire, Zangagensis, um, off branches of Neocaridina. So when we get into that, you'll see CRS, which could be cherry red shrimp, or now it can mean crystal red shrimp too. So that's gotten a little confusing. And same with the RCS, which is red cherry shrimp or red crystal shrimp, black crystal shrimp. Um, you'll see the different colors abbreviated as such. And hopefully you're in that form, you know it's shrimp, so you can figure that it's going to be the type of shrimp and the, the color being used or the patterning. So like P 
Pinto Red Galaxy uh, could be, you know, PRG or um, Yellow Line, YL, and then uh, Sakura Yellow. So you'd see YL, uh, S, Y. So that'd be Yellow Line, Sakura Yellow Shrimp. And it just gets kind of nutty. But a lot of times in price lists, they'll, they'll do that. So big ones you'll see also BB, Blue Bolt, um, Thai B, which is TB, uh, that's Taiwanese shrimp um, with the Taiwan B shrimp or Japanese uh, B shrimp. And then there's TTB, which is Thai, Taiwanese, uh, and Tiger, and then B shrimp. So you've got Thai Thai B, um, Thai Tiger B, um, you've got Tiger B, which is a Tiger shrimp and a B shrimp. Uh, BD, which is Blue Dream Shrimp, that's a common one. Uh, Blue Velvet, BV. Um, uh, Cherry Shrimp, CS, just nice and simple. And uh, Bloody Mary, BM, that's a different kind of Neocaridina line than just a Red Cherry Shrimp. If you were to mix them, you'd get a Mutant. So, let's, let's, we're done with shrimp. You can figure out the shrimp from there. Let's talk about one that maybe you did here all the time maybe you've heard it all the time ph what does that stand for well that stands for potential hydrogen and that's the ionization level of hydrogen in the water in the element and that will show you uh whether it's basic or acidic but maybe you didn't know what that stood for uh tds is total dissolved solids when we're talking about water chemistry um, there's BW, which is black water. That's when you have lots of tannins in the water and probably a low TDS with a higher acidity, or should I say a lower pH number, which means higher acidity. API would be a test brand. Uh, that's a company that makes testing. So a lot of times you'll say that my API kit said that my ammonia and my pH and yada yada are these things. Uh, for shrimp keeping, you've also got KH and GH, which is going to be carbonate hardness and general hardness. One is the TDS, essentially, that the dissolves solids in the water. And the other one is specifically more calcium-oriented or carbonate uh, and carbon and calcium in the water, which allows the shrimp to build their hard shells. Uh, along with that, you'll see things like... Um, you know, if is it a PT, is it a planted tank, is it a um, breeding tank, grow out, GO, uh, grow out tank for little babies. When you're starting a tank, you'll see things like WS, wet start, DS, dry start, which are two methods of starting uh, a planted tank, either keeping it humid and letting it grow uh, immersed or submerged. Now, immersed is when the plants are underwater at the root level usually, and then they grow up out of that. And then submerged obviously is when they're all completely underwater for the whole plant. And a lot of times you move plants from, from immerse to submerge. So people will say, is it a, um, an EP, an immerse plant or EG immerse growth? I've seen a lot of different uh, variations on those acronyms. You know, you're also going to run into acronyms when we're talking about things like CPDs or um, which is Celestial Pearl Danios or uh, any sort of fish that has multiple names. People will will start to turn it into acronyms. Um, also strains of things like discus, like uh, PBD. So that's like pigeon blood discus. Uh people get very specialized within whether it's live bears or whatever. They'll get very specialized within the hobby because a lot of times they'll have price lists or categories for contests and things and they delineate it that way. Um, now, another thing we should talk about are the clubs. There's things like ANFA, the American, uh, <laughs> the American Native Fish Association. Uh, there's things like the ALA, American Live Bear Association, the AKA, the American Killifish Association. So you've got lots of different organizations like that, as well as regional groups like Guapa in D.C., Massey or Maasai in uh, out of St. Louis area, and Indianapolis area. Um, and you've also got, uh, you know, every region has something like that. For me, it's GSAS, the Greater Seattle Area um, Aquatic society and a lot of times they don't actually 
like they get rid of some of the smaller words in there. Um, another one that you'll see commonly uh, when you're talking about uh, breeding fish once you're at those meetings and things like that is F1, 2, or 3. That happens to be the generations, um, or phileo, I think is where that comes from originally, um, which is like uh, family or the family line, basically. Um, and uh, that means, you know, if you see an F10, that may mean the person's been working on that line for um, 10 years. Also, you'll see WC or TR, which is wild caught versus tank raised. A lot of people are trying not to use fish that are trying not to buy fish that are from the wild, whereas other people want those wild fish for the diversification of genetics, things like that. But you'll see those acronyms a lot also. Um, a fun one that I like is the uh, DPGS, which is the dollar per gallon sale. People will tweet that when the big box stores, the BB um, big box, uh, have a sale, so Petco or PetSmart. And uh, yeah, it's a dollar per gallon, what it sounds like, and everyone rushes to get their tanks. Um, also, in sizes of tanks, when we're start talking about tanks, you've got things like 90P, 90L, 90H. So these are originally started maybe by a company like ADA, so Aqua Design Amano, but the, 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 they don't use our standard of, uh, of measurement, our imperial or um, royal, in, depending on where you are in the world. There's really only three main standards, um, and two mostly. Uh, but they use metrics, so centimeters. So the 90 will stand for 90 presentation or pool. So um, pool is for a rectangular tank, so a nor normal tank, not a bow front. Not a super shallow, not a super tall, whatever, super deep. Um, 90C stands for 90 cubed. Uh, it, you'll also see 75C, 60C, 60P. Uh, you get it. But the numbers change and the, the, the letters you'll see are T for tall, H for high. So those are the same thing. Um, you'll see low or long for L sometimes. Um, but usually you'll see W for wide uh, and uh, L for low in, instead of long versus low. And uh, let's see here. You know, a lot of those things come, come from specific brands originally, and then they get adopted by other companies. So UNS, Ultim Nature Systems, uses a 90P listing, even though Aqua Design Amano is who came up with that naming system. Uh, but now we understand that when you say, oh, I want an ADA style tank or uh, a 90P, you, you know that means that you're going to have a rimless tank, low iron glass, probably a lily, uh, a lily uh, pipe funnel tube uh, and an inline heat. You know, it's that clean uh, Japanese or maybe even German a little bit um, Bauhaus aesthetic of, of tanks where the nature, there's hardly anything to distract you from what's in your tank. What's in your tank? Sorry, guys, I had, I had to say it. Um, another important thing, you know, you're going to go with your KH and your GH when you're testing on your API. So that's general hardness uh, and carbonate hardness, which also has to do with TDS, total dissolved solids, as I mentioned, which is the floating around elements in your, in your water. Uh, some people will say uh, HW, that's hard water, SW, soft water, and then you'll get PPM, parts per million. These are not just for the fish hobby, but these are general, you know, chemistry, life, just out there in the ether terms. Same with like DOA, a lot of, a lot of fish companies have DOA policies where you order a fish and as long as you get it within two hours, that's kind of the standard uh, of delivery to your house. Uh, they will take care of it. They ensure that it will arrive alive, arrive alive. Um, and then let's see, what else do we have? We have GPH, which is gallons per hour, uh, which is for filters. Uh, you also see a lot of wattage numbers. So on lights, you'll see something like it's a 90 watt, it's a 30 watt, it's a 20 watt LED. Uh, and LED versus T5, uh, so we've got light emitting di diode for the newer generation, and then you've got the older, um, you know, the long bar style lights that maybe younger people don't even know what some of those are, 
but um, you've also got CFL um, lights, and uh, then you have, uh, I guess, you know, there's silver oxide, there's some other growing light terminology, but I won't get into all of that. It gets very specific, but I will talk about the general light uh, wording, uh, which to me are important, which uh, include uh, PAR, which is uh, parabolic aluminized reflector. So that came from when old grow lights, both aquarium and on land, used to have uh, a hood and you'd have light bars in the center and then a curved or parabolic uh which is a math term, a uh, geometry term. And the light would come out and it would reflect in a curve and then have a certain lux, lumens, uh, K. K, when we talk about light, is uh, Kelvin. And that is the uh, brightness or coolness, the red or the blue in the light. And so when you're talking about a light, you could say it's 7,000 K or 5,000 K. Um, with the blue being on the, the lower end and the red being on the other end. Uh, and then the light that goes straight down may have a par of a certain amount here, uh, but the, the par value is how much it could spread versus how intense it is as it diffuses through hitting the water because it loses its energy very drastically. That's why people use such strong lights. So I just thought that was kind of interesting that PAR was from originally the T5 uh, lights with the with the tube, the fluorescent, or the, um, the CFL and all the various other kinds of lamps and lights that we've used in the hobby. Um, other than that, I mean, there's just a lot of random terms you'll run into. Uh, there's there's organizations and things. Uh, there's HOB, hang off the back filter. Then we get into uh, just different brands and models. So the Fluval or the Eheim FX4. So it's like filters are um, sometimes the acronym doesn't really make sense to anybody or it's in another language. It's German or it's Japanese or it's American and you may be German or Japanese or, you know, French, whatever it may be. Uh, and then I think the last one we'll talk about is uh, CITES, uh, which would be the uh, Convention on, I have to look at this one, the Convention on uh, the International Trade in Endangered Species, Flora and Fauna. So that one is like why Americans can't have arowana fish. So you'll see that it's a CITES species, meaning nobody should be trading in it. Uh, now in Canada, they're allowed to have it. In Asia, they're allowed to have it. It just has to be CITES approved, which means that people from the organization have said that that farm is raising uh, TR, tank raised, and not WC, uh, wild caught fish. Now CARES is another group that, or organization that people in a lot of fish clubs would know about, which is, uh, actually I don't know what it stands for, but it uh, is a group that basically takes threatened or endangered species of fish and tries to breed them and spread them in the hobby. Ibama, I-B-A-M-A, -A, is a group in Brazil that is tasked with deciding when uh, fisheries have been taxed too much, what fish to export or not export, and they set a lot of things like uh, how much money people get for neon tetras when they catch them live and things like that so uh you'll run into some of that if you dig deeper into the hobby uh you know i think some of the common ones you'll see that are other uh when we talk about like specifically uh you're into a very specific thing uh like killifish you may see a number associated with a strain or a year associated with a different trait that came on so I mean, uh, same with plants, you can find like a 2009 Iguazu or something like that, which is a, a sword plant that had a strain or a mutation of a certain year or it won an award a certain year, and it's a continuation of that line. Uh, L numbers for Laura Caridae, which are catfish, um, plecos, and cistrus, uh, pleca uh, ple plecciota, uh, you've got those are because the taxonomy hasn't caught up with the hobby. So a lot of times there's hundreds of fish in hobbyist hands, but nobody's named them yet uh, because they haven't written a dissertation about it all or anything. So I-M-H-O, 
I hope this helps you guys. Uh, that's in my humble opinion. That's one you'll see a lot anyways out in the world. And I know this was a little bit dry and wordy and all that, but I just wanted to kind of demystify a little bit of the the terminology and acronym specifically you see in the hobby. So if this has helped at all, whether you're old in the hobby or new in the hobby or whatever, in between, whether you're in the hobby at all, uh, fresh water versus salt water, FW versus SW, uh, um, there's just too many darn acronyms. So I'm going to GTFO. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share if you want to share, if you dare. And uh, if you want to put these, these lovely little schools, they're working so hard in their schools, it'd be great if they could get to college. Uh, and you can do that by supporting the Patreon, live chat, super chats, or, uh, you know, just buying things like in the links below, the, the affiliate links. They're just products that I think are good and that I've passed on to you guys that I think are a good value or vendors that sell fish, shrimp, uh, plants that I think have a good price and incredible selection and good service. And uh, the channel usually gets a small cut of that. Or uh, maybe I don't get a cut of it per se, but I get they'll send me some free things every so often. and I Or I just like supporting them like Lucas Brett's. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. I hope you have a great day. Take care of your critters, of course yourself and the people around you. Swim on, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.